Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Now at 5.30, we're tracking the search for a suspect who police say robbed a Lexington hotel. Also on WKYT this morning, three people, including a child, escaped from a Lexington apartment after an overnight fire. And find out what could be next for the old courthouse in downtown Lexington. These stories and breaking news as it happens on WKYT this morning. A lot of questions about that old building. Hey, good morning. It's good to have you with us here on Monday, December 1st, if you can believe that. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. A lot of questions about what the weather has in store. You know when it's as warm as it was yesterday and into today, something's... Yeah, about to change. When it's this time of year. Yeah. That's right, and it is. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris, who's tracking those changes in our First Alert Weather Center. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, we're looking at a big front and going to be making its way through in the next several hours. Here's the deal, though. Look, we're going to have a lot of rain and also cold temperatures. Now, I know you're probably walking out this morning. I've already felt outside this morning uh, across the way. If you're not under this rain just yet, It'll slide down toward the southeast, but you say, where's the cold air then? Because it actually feels really nice outside, and it does. Don't dress for the 50s and 60s. Dress for this cold air rushing in later on as we drop our temperatures to the upper 30s, lower 40s for afternoon highs. We've already hit our high this morning, so it's just going to drop from here on out, and we may even see wintry mix later on tonight. And I'll explain those details coming to you in just a few minutes. All right, we thank you. And here's the latest from WKYT. Right now, we are tracking a breaking news alert in Lexington. Police looking for a suspect after a robbery at a hotel. It happened within the last hour or so at the Ramada Inn on North Broadway. WKYT's Mark Barber is live at the scene now <laughs> with the breaking details and some new information. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Bill and Rebecca. In the past 20 minutes, police arrested a man here at the Ramada Inn. But at this time, investigators are not saying if that arrest is connected to the armed robbery. Now, for the past hour and a half, canines have been searching the area around the hotel for the man who robbed the hotel. Investigators tell us at 4 o'clock this morning, the robber threatened the clerk with a gun, demanding money. Officers say after the man took the cash, he took off through the front door and ran behind the hotel. Investigators tell us canines tracked the armed man to Judy Lane, where they found fresh footprints. The robbery was caught on surveillance tape. Police described the robber as a white man standing about 5 foot 11. I'm told he was wearing a black bandana, a gray hoodie, and black pants with an orange stripe. Now, one question investigators are trying to answer this morning, was the armed man a, a guest at the hotel here? Police say the robber did not walk through the front door of the hotel, but instead they say he walked up to the clerk through the hallway that only had access through a side door. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. A man accused of shooting two people in Lexington will be arraigned today. Police say Marcellus Means shot two people on Charles Avenue last month. One of the victims went up to an officer who was working traffic for the Garth Brooks concerts and told police that he'd been shot. Both victims had non-life-threatening injuries. Means was arrested over the weekend in Scott County. New on WKYT this morning, an overnight fire forced several people from their homes. And that fire started inside an apartment complex at Dalton Court and Etowah Drive in Lexington. No one was hurt, but one family is now looking for somewhere else to live. WKYT Sean Moody is live in Lexington where the fire started. Sean, good morning. Good morning, Bill and Rebecca. Most of the people who live in this apartment complex are back in their homes, except for the people who lived in the apartment where that fire started. You can see some of the debris from that unit out here on the curb. Now the people who live inside there are having to stay somewhere else. The firefighters say the fire started around 11 o'clock last night in a second floor apartment. Firefighters say they were able to get the flames out pretty quickly, but they say there was some smoke and water damage inside. Firefighters said they found a dog inside and they were able to get that dog back to its family. People who lived in the apartments around there said they were worried the fire would spread. It was kind of scary because at that point we didn't know what was going on. I mean, if our building was going to catch on fire as well, and then, you know, where do we go for the night? <laughs> Now, of course, all the people who live in the building were forced out while firefighters worked this fire. Now, most of them are back in their homes, except for the one family. We're told a man, woman, and child who were living in that unit. The Red Cross has put them up somewhere else for the night. Live in Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. 
All right, John, appreciate the, the report. Of course, uh, we'll continue to follow up on that story this morning. And now to a more tragic situation in southern Kentucky, where this morning arson investigators are looking into the cause of a deadly house fire. The fire started yesterday on Highway 904 in Whitley County. That's south and east of Williamsburg. The coroner says 85-year-old Harold Carpenter was found dead inside his home. No one else was home when the fire started. And new this morning, state police are investigating after a man was found dead in an eastern Kentucky church, or at least nearby the church. Police say the coroner found 58-year-old Woodrow Fields dead at the Everts Pentecostal Holiness Church in Harlan County. Investigators have not said how Fields died. Police are still investigating the cause. Well, gifts for a Kentucky toddler go up in flames. Investigators say it could be arson. The weekend fire damaged a bedroom on Hillview Court in Franklin County. The homeowner says she was storing Christmas gifts for her three-year-old in that room. I cried the whole night. Yesterday, when I walked inside, I just started crying. I just I couldn't really do nothing but cry. Firefighters are not sure if the house is still safe enough to live in. This morning, police are searching for the shooter accused in the city's latest murder. A warrant is now out for 20-year-old Martavius Bell, Jr. Investigators say he shot a woman in the chest last week on East 7th Street. The Fayette County coroner says 51-year-old Stacy Lilly then died at UK Hospital. One witness told us that he heard the two arguing over money. The search continues this morning for two men who escaped from a Lexington prison. Michael Fleet and Joshua Stevenson escaped from the Blackburn Correctional Complex about 8 o'clock Saturday night. Both men were serving 13-year sentences for burglary charges. Fleet out of Bell County and Stevenson out of Campbell County. Well, four people accused in a violent robbery will be back in court this week. Robin Adams, Patrick Brand, Rico Penix, and 16-year-old Nathaniel Davis have all been indicted by a grand jury, according to the Advocate Messenger. Davis is charged as an adult. Police say they were involved in a robbery at a Domino's in Danville, where the clerk, Zoe Reed, was shot in the stomach. All four suspects will face a judge tomorrow. Well, today you are invited to hear how the city plans to save a Lexington landmark. The city is seeking a $200,000 grant from the EPA. If awarded, the federal funds would be used to remove lead-based paint, mold, and asbestos from the old courthouse. Until the city closed it in 2012, because of these concerns, it housed the Lexington History Museum. Today's public meeting is set for 530 on the third floor of the Phoenix Building. The time now, 5.36 on WKYT this morning. The Lexington Fire Department has extended the deadline for this year's annual toy drive. Each year, the Lexington Fraternal Order of Firefighters collects toys to give to families in need. It is accepting applications for the program today and tomorrow. And selected parents will be allowed to shop for Christmas gifts for free. If you would like to apply for the program or know someone who could benefit, we have the details about it at WKYT.com. It was a big weekend for families to deck the halls for the holidays. The weekend after Thanksgiving kicks off the countdown to Christmas, of course. Local Christmas tree farms are packed with folks looking for that perfect Fraser fir. It's kind of a silly tradition, but you have the same saw every year for, for nine years, or I guess even goes before that when my wife and I were cutting our own trees. But yeah, we bring out the kids, and um, everybody has to take their turn at the saw, even the youngest kid that we have. So and we love doing it every year. And I'm sure they enjoy that. In order to stay ahead of the demand, Neiman plants about 1,500 trees each year. Those trees grow for 10 years before they're ready to be cut for Christmas. A huge Christmas tree in downtown Lexington will be lit during a ceremony tonight. The community is invited to join Mayor Jim Gray and others at the newly constructed Isaac Murphy Memorial Art Garden. That's at the corner of East 3rd Street and Midland Avenue. Tonight's tree lighting for that location set for 6 o'clock. And what's the cost of the 12 days of Christmas now? The PNC Wealth Management Group Christmas Price Index says to buy every item from 12 drummers drumming to a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> Cost nearly $27,000. That's up 1% or nearly $300 from last year. Yikes. Buying those same items on the internet will cost about 8% more or $43,000. So 12 days of Christmas, not too cheap. <laughs> That's right. It would definitely set you back. 